return. It says, you sow in, in tears. You sow in tears. You will return carrying sheaves with you in your hand. What are those sheaves? What will we reap as we weep? What will be the fruit of our tears? Friends, it's the harvest, the salvation of the hardest of hearts, the turning of fathers to children and children to the wisdom of fathers. It's the prodigals coming home. It's a transformation, not only of hearts, but of spheres of society and cities and nations. It is a harvest of revival together with reformation. It is the full manifestation of the kingdom. Prophetic promises fulfilled. You sow in tears. You will reap in joy with the harvest given into your hands. Paul Cain also said this. We must have tears if we're going to see revival. If we have no tears, it's because our hearts are parched. Oh, Lord, give us tears that we may see revival. Can you say that, Lord? Give us tears that we may see revival. See, a lack of tears is the result of these dry, parched, stony hearts, ones that have become indifferent to the world around us, indifferent to the state of the church, indifferent or even cynical to prophetic promises yet to be fulfilled. Who these parched hearts have been dried up by the religious spirit, tradition, complacent to the compromise within our own lives. We don't grieve over our own sin. We don't grieve over the perversion running rampant in our cities. But the Lord is saying, it's time to break up the fallow ground of our hearts. It is time to allow my spirit to tenderize your hearts once again and water, be watered by the rains of my spirit. It's time for my bride to drink deeply from the fountain of my throne and stir up the rivers of living water within you that your heart would no longer be parched, but you would be a well-watered garden. It's time to come alive with the gift of tears from the Lord. You know, this is a prophetic conference. Must be thinking the people talking to me, you know, this lady here, a prophet supposed to be a teaching about the prophetic. And why are we hearing about prayer and tears and travail? And, but you know, Jeremiah the prophet was known as a weeping prophet. He cried out for his eyes to be a fountain of tears. Oh, that there would be prophets, more prophets today like Jeremiah, whose eyes were a fountain of tears. He travailed in intercession over the grieved heart of God and the condition of his nation. He wept over the inheritance of Jesus. Jesus. And he said this to every prophet and prophetic person in the hearing of my voice, Jeremiah 27, 18, if they be prophets and if the word of the Lord be in them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts that the vessels, the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem would not go to Babylon. He is crying out. He is looking for a people who would come into the place of intercession a prophetic people who would receive the heart of God and with tears and travail with weeping would war over the vessels of the house of the Lord that they would not fall into the hands of Babylon that they would not be defiled and snatched up by the hands of the enemy you know that Samuel, another prophet before, prophesying to Saul about God rejecting him as king. He spent all night grieved and in intercession for Saul. And after sharing that hard word, he again, in tears, in travail, moaned for Saul. Do we weep as a prophet of old when we need to deliver a prophetic word? Do we pray over that word with our tears? Do we birth that word in travail? And once it's given, do we continue to wash over that word with our tears that it would be fulfilled? And 
there are many other examples of prophets, Moses, Isaiah, and many others who were blessed with the gift of tears as part of their prophetic ministry. But the greatest prophet of all time that wept and wept and wept was Jesus Christ himself. He wept at Lazarus' death and resurrection power was released to bring that dead body back to life. He wept at the Garden of Gethsemane, bearing the burdens of humanity, resulting in his own resurrection and the redemption of the church. Have you considered that Jesus is named the man of sorrows? And in these last days, it is imperative that the church become a partaker of Christ's heavenly calling and his heavenly ways. Jesus, the man of sorrows, let us also be known. Let us be known as a man, as a woman of sorrows who know how to weep with Jesus. What a privilege to share in the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. What if we were to call upon and accept God's gift of tears? Before he would ever consider giving us his gift of revival. The seedbed of tears is what's going to release true and lasting revival. The seedbed of tears is what's going to release resurrection power. Elijah was a man who stretched himself out, weeping over the body of a dead boy. And God, and he brought him back to life. And God is looking for those who are willing to stretch themselves out in travail over lifeless people, over dead and dry situations, that we would see the release of Christ's resurrection power unto revival and reformation. He's inviting us to weep with him until we see this come to pass. So are you exhausted of all your human strength, your wisdom, your resources, your abilities, and still not seeing the fullness of what God promised you, what he's shown you? Have you come finally to the end of yourself? You want to see revival? You want to see reformation? You want to hold the harvest, the sheaves in your hands? In the words of William Booth, try tears. So we can see what he sees, hear what he hears, feel, feel what he feels, the compassion of Christ. Tears take us beyond programs and personalities, beyond strategies and striving. Tears are coming back to the church because he wants to use his bride to release resurrection power. He wants to use his bride to revive every dead thing. This is your upgrade, church. Awakening hearts to come fully alive, to war with him as you weep with him. If your heart is burning right now with the yes, I want you to stand up. If you want, you can run up here and they're ones who need to fall on their face get on your knees and cry out to God say give me the gift of tears give me the gift of tears tenderize my heart that I can weep with you again tenderize my heart that I can receive from you again oh give us hearts of flesh give us tears give us tears give us tears of righteous anger to weep over our sin and disbelief and apathy oh Give us tears to weep over the state of the church, the religious spirit that grieves your heart and quenches our fire. God, give us tears of travail and repentance over our own compromise, tears of identificational repentance over the sin of our nation, over deception, corruption, the innocent bloodshed. Give us tears of righteous anger to weep over our cities and nations. God, give us weeping and travail. Come on, the pains of birthing in the place, secret place with you, all that we would birth the new wineskin for this season. God, tenderize our hearts. Give up the gift of tears with the love and compassion of Jesus that we would weep. We would weep over the pain on your heart over what's grieving your heart, over the deception for our, over our children and youth. Give us the, we the gift of tears, all that we would weep over the harvest, over the lost and the prodigals, tears that bring in the sheaves. God, you said that those who sow in tears will reap in joy, carrying the harvest in their hands. We want the harvest. 
give us tears that become a seedbed for revival. Tears that transform entire cities and nations. Tears that release the manifest presence of God. Tears that release miracles. Give us tears that bring the dead back to life. Jesus, the man of sorrows, we want to identify with you. We want to be acquainted with you, both in your sufferings and in the power of your resurrection. Jesus, the one who wept and is weeping us over us today, take us into your weeping room. Holy Spirit, take us beyond words, beyond programs and what we've come to know, what we've done before. Give us the gift of tears. Give us the grace to grow over people and cities and nations. Tenderize our hearts today, God. Give us hearts of flesh. Oh, all across the room, I just, the Lord is just showing me hearts like a pale gray color, lifeless hearts, and they're coming to life with color, with vibrancy, with new life, with resurrection power, with fresh vision, with the ability to dream again. Hearts coming to life. Receive your new heart of flesh today. Receive the gift of tears that you can weep and war with the one known as the man of sorrows. And this is our posture. This is our prophetic posture for revival. God seal it here in Jesus' name.